subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yesh chonzo here are the top stories we are tracking for you Rain fury brings life to halt in several parts of India. Aid needs to be multiplied rapidly says Pakistan Prime Minister as cataclysmic floods kill over 1100. And Sri Lanka inflation soars 64.3% in August IMF extends bailout negotiations. And now for all the details. Several states in India are presently reeling under the impact of monsoon rains that has led to water logging and floods affecting millions. Water from swollen rivers in northern and southern states this week entered residences that has led to a drinking water shortage along with difficulties related to commuting and acquiring food. Residential areas of Varanasi city in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state were waterlogged and several official buildings were left submerged in flood water as the water level of Ganga river remains high amid the ongoing monsoon season water from swollen rivers have entered residences and has led to a drinking water shortage along with difficulties related to commuting and acquiring food the situation has compelled flood victims to travel on rafts and boats अरे बिजली कड़क नहीं है पानी नहीं है खाने पीने का बहुत दिक्कत है आने जाने का बहुत दिक्कत है कीड़ा मकौड़ा है सांप तक निकल रहे हैं और पर पानी घर में अंदर में घुस गया है सिमिलर सीन्स वर विटनेस्ड इन मिर्जापुर सिटी हाउसेज एंड स्कूल्स वर पार्शली सबमस्ट इन वाटर द फ्लड्स इन उत्तर प्रदेश हैव एफेक्टेड नियरली टू हंड्रेड फोर्टी थाउजेंड पीपल इन ओवर वन थाउजेंड विलेजेस ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट मीन वाइल Agricultural patches in southern Kottayam town of Kerala state were flooded as overflowing rivers swallowed crops on Wednesday. Incessant rains in recent days have caused a heavy gush of water through canals and paddy fields. Rainfall and water logging has thrown life out of gear in several areas across Kerala. Adapala na mikka veedugalilum vellam kerikondirikkana ippa. Ibide arthulla pala veedugal nathum vellam aanu ippa. ियाल Three terrorists of Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba outfit were neutralized in an encounter in Shopian district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. A senior police official confirmed on Wednesday. Security forces launched a cordon and search operation on Tuesday in Shopian's Nagbal area upon receiving specific inputs. The official said the search operation turned into an encounter in which the three terrorists were gunned down. The trio were involved in several terror crimes cases including civilian killings. This comes a week after security forces foiled multiple infiltration attempts by terrorists from Pakistan's side. On August 22, a terrorist of Lashkar-e-Taiba was also captured alive while trying to sneak across the border into Jammu and Kashmir. सबसे बड़ी बात है कि इसमें कोई कोलेटरल डैमेज नहीं हुआ है और दानिश जो भट है बहुत खूंखार टेररिस्ट था काफी सिविलियन किलिंग इन्वॉल्व था और रिक्रूटमेंट में काफी इन्वॉल्व था ये मैं न्यूज फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान अ थर्ड ऑफ पाकिस्तान इज लिटरली अंडर वाटर आफ्टर वीक्स ऑफ टेरेंशियल रेनफॉल दैट ट्रिगर्ड हैवी फ्लडिंग किलिंग मोर देन 1100 पीपल पाकिस्तान प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ हैज सेड द 160 मिलियन यूएस डॉलर अपील बाय द यूएन फॉर फ्लड एड टू हिज कंट्री नीड्स टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड रैपिडली Torrential rains and flooding have submerged a third of Pakistan and killed more than 1100 people including 380 children as the United Nations appealed for aid on Tuesday for what it described as an unprecedented climate catastrophe roads and bridges have been washed away making it harder to get aid to the more than 33 million people affected by the disaster 
Hundreds of thousands of them are living outdoors without access to food, clean water, shelter or basic health care. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has said the 160 million US dollars appealed by the UN for flood aid needs to be multiplied rapidly and pledged transparency for every penny. Sharif also said he feared the devastation caused by recent floods would further derail an economy that has already been in turmoil, possibly leading to an acute food shortage and adding to skyrocketing inflation, which stood at 24.9% in July. This is only going to provide $160 million. It's triggering others. Yeah. Already. So I think this needs to be multiplied rapidly. And uh, I want to give one solemn pledge and uh, solemn commitment uh, at my command that every penny will be spent in a very transparent fashion. Every penny will reach the needy. There will be no waste at all. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said in a video message, Pakistan is awash in suffering. The Pakistani people are facing a monsoon on steroids as he launched an appeal for help. The UN chief is expected to visit Pakistan next week. Early estimates put the damage from the floods at more than 10 billion US dollars, the government said, adding the world had an obligation to help Pakistan cope with the effects of man-made climate change. The losses are likely to be much higher, said the Prime Minister. Moving on, flood-affected residents of Gilgit, Baltistan have demanded reconstruction of bridges and other infrastructure in the illegally occupied region to rebuild their lives hit hard due to the natural calamity. They lamented they have only received mere condolences but no financial assistance. Flood-affected people in Gilgit, Baltistan have demanded relief and reconstruction of bridges and other infrastructure as flash floods triggered by torrential rains have wreaked havoc in the illegally occupied region. Residents in Ashkoman area expressed the two connecting bridges between Jalalabad and Kot village in the illegally occupied territory have been swept away, leaving more than 300 families stranded. They said they urgently need fundamental assistance to rebuild their lives including reconstruction of dams, bridges and roads. The Locals blamed the continuous intervention of Pakistan in the illegally occupied region has caused massive disturbances in the ecological balance leading to such disasters. Though it has become an annual phenomenon, the current authorities have made no learning and no efforts are done to mitigate the effects. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban declared Wednesday a national holiday to mark the first anniversary of the withdrawal of US-led troops from Afghanistan after a brutal 20-year war. Capital Kabul was lit up with colored lights and fireworks to celebrate the anniversary. Celebratory fireworks lit up the Kabul sky on Tuesday night on the first anniversary of the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, which the Taliban were marking as Freedom Day. The fireworks were accompanied by intense celebratory aerial firing in many areas of Kabul. The withdrawal completed a minute before midnight local time on August 30, 2021, came as the war-torn country was taken over by the Taliban who had waged a 20-year insurgency against US-led forces that invaded Afghanistan in October 2001 following the September 11 attacks in New York. The de facto Taliban government also declared Wednesday a public holiday to mark the anniversary, the Labour Ministry said. One year since taking over, the Taliban has not been formally recognized by any foreign governments and is still subjected to international sanctions which the United Nations and aid groups say are now hindering humanitarian operations in Afghanistan. Earlier on Monday, the UN aid chief Martin Griffith 
told the UN Security Council that the countries should restart some development aid for impoverished Afghanistan that was halted a year ago when the Taliban seized power. Afghanistan has long relied heavily on development aid, which was cut as the international community demanded the Taliban respect human rights, particularly girls and women whose access to work and school has been limited by the Islamists. Inflation rate in Sri Lanka surged to a record 64.3% in August, the country's statistics department said on Wednesday, as the island nation battles its worst economic crisis in 70 years. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund extended its mission for one more day as discussions for an emergency loan program were still ongoing. Sri Lanka's inflation surged to 64.3% in August after a 60.8% jump in July. The country's census and statistics department said in a statement on Wednesday, as it battles the worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. Food inflation climbed 93.7% and the non-food group jumped 50.2% causing the surge in the Colombo Consumer Price Index, CCPI, the statistics department said. The CCPI released at the end of each month acts as a lead indicator for broader national prices. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund IMF mission, which was expected to conclude on Wednesday, was extended by one more day as the discussions were still ongoing with Lankan authorities for an emergency loan program, IMF mission chief Peter Breor said. President Ranil Vikramasinghe earlier on Tuesday announced an interim budget in a bid to win the IMF funding and said value-added tax will be increased to 15 percent from the current 12 percent starting September 1. The government also increased payout to the poor and announced farm debt write-off to aid the vulnerable sections. Protests have, however, continued over the crisis that has led to rampant inflation and shortages of essentials. Police had to resort to firing tear gas and use water cannons to disperse hundreds of university students who marched through streets of Colombo on Tuesday, demanding solutions to the economic crisis and the release of detained demonstrators. They accused the government of cracking down on protesters who helped topple the government of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa last month. Sri Lankan lawmakers voted six-time Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe as the new president last month, hoping his long experience in government could help pull the country out of the crippling economic and political crisis. As things swing back into action this time, grand celebration of 10-day long Ganesh Chaturthi festival began across India after a two-year COVID-induced hiatus. The festival marks the birth of Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha. India on Wednesday began celebrations of Ganesh Chaturthi festival, which commemorates the birth of the elephant-headed god, Lord Ganesha. Scores of Hindu devotees gathered outside the famous Sri Siddhi Vinayak temple in western Mumbai city to mark the beginning of the festival. The devotees prayed for the well-being and prosperity of their families and some also observed a fast to seek blessings from Lord Ganesha on the occasion. Similar scenes were also witnessed in Gohati city of northeastern Assam state. Devotees formed serpentine queues at Ganesh temples since early morning to seek blessings of Lord Ganesha, who is considered the embodiment of wisdom and is widely revered as the remover of obstacles. In southern Hyderabad city, devotees celebrated the day with a giant-sized idol of the deity amid tight security in the vicinity. During the festival, people buy decorated and colorful idols of Lord Ganesha and establish them in their homes for either 10 days or one, three or five days and revel in religious pageantry. An immersion ceremony known as Visarjan of the idols is performed on the last day which signifies divine entities returning to their abodes after being the guest of the devotees. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन